It is so good to be back, and what a time it is to be back in the studio to talk about La Liga. The previews are here. Who are we looking forward to seeing this season? Of course, we would love to talk about every team in La Liga, but let's be honest, when the season starts and the games come up and you start seeing that top five form, it's going to be the same teams that are going to be there and thereabouts. So uh, we're obviously going to start with the prominent teams around. So Real Madrid. Uh, not as active in the transfer market this season as they were last season with the new faces coming in. I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing for them because I think they have the groundwork there. But they did add a couple, so we must throw to the players who came in and came out. So I'm going to uh, direct myself back to the airport style that I just came from. I think it was about eight airports in three days. It was awful. Um, let's take a look at the arrivals coming in to the Bernabeu. These are the players that are coming in. Danilo comes in at right back 20 million euros. Casilla, goalkeeper, comes in, of course, with uh, Casillas going out. They needed someone to come in uh, who can potentially be a backup moving forward. Vallejo, centre-back, comes in for $2 million, as you see going down the list. You've got uh, Cherchev, who comes in for $10 million, another player in from Villarreal. They do like to take in some of the best players from the league, from teams like Villarreal, Mallorca, Espanyol, as you see there. But no humongous names that you'd expect after seeing James Rodriguez. Tony Cruz going back another season, Gareth Bale, Modric, etc., etc. So I think that's a good thing for Real Madrid. But who went out? Let's take a look at who was in the departure lounge for Real Madrid. So the most notable name, Kadira, going to Juventus. I was so excited to see Kadira kind of come back in amongst that team because I do rate him highly. But I think he just never really fit in at Real Madrid after Oza was out and that whole era moved on, I think, with Modric and Cruz forming that new midfield partnership. He would not have started every game. Casillas, of course, moving on to FC Porto on a free transfer. So how will this affect the team? Before I get into my preview in the starting lineup, I think that I must reiterate the point. Is Real Madrid have been known, they are like an airport. They have people coming in and going every time with Perez at the helm. He likes to mix things up. He likes to bring in the big names. He's, he's more of a marketer than he is a, a team builder, I think. He wants to bring in the players that's going to sell the jerseys, fill the stadiums on arrival day. No one would generally have done it this season out of all those players that came in, considering how many people turned up to see Ronaldo and Bale and those and so on. But they have a team that they can build around now and they have young players who they can now fill into the, these positions more so. But what they're going to have to worry about, I think, is the midfield triangle that they partner because in when they're on form, Modric, Cruz and Isco are fantastic, but it's about injuries, it's about form. Isco had had an enormous drop in form towards the end of last season and I think that to keep him uh, playing well and, and consistent with Modric and Cruz is going to be a big thing this season. So... Without further ado, let's get to my predicted start in 11 for Real Madrid this season. So here is Real Madrid's formation, and I know what you're thinking. What the hell has changed from this from last season? Nothing. That is the point. We've got Navas in goals, which is obviously a big change, which I would have implied last season if I was the manager. CS would not have started as many games for me. Carvajal Varane comes in, I think, more so this season than Pepe. Pepe will play. Don't get me wrong, but this is I, I think that Varane has now reached the point where he needs to be used more or he needs to be passed on because he is young and I think that he's itching to start games. So I imagine from what I've seen in preseason more so as well, I would see Varane starting a little bit more. Still, though, I wouldn't be surprised if Pepe was going to play Ramos after all the controversy about whether he was going to leave. He's a Real Madrid guy. He loves the team. And you can tell that uh, I don't know whether it will fit under the new management of Benitez. But I think that Ramos is going to be crucial in going back into centre-back. He just didn't do it for me, defensive midfielder. There are certain players that, that emphasise their game when you get David Luiz, who I think is better at defensive midfield. So I think he's pretty god-awful centre-back. But uh, not for Ramos, I'm afraid. He's good at pinging the ball, but he's better at the back there. And that's where his be he's best, most comfortable. Marcelo at left-back. The midfield, this is crucial because Cruz, Modric and James did not play together enough for me last season. And when they did... They clicked. James specifically is going to have a huge season this season, I think, for me. He played so well towards the end of the season, fitting into that gap in there. Uh, he's more used to being, I would say, more on the left than in previous uh, club teams, not so much with Colombia where he plays this role. But I think that he's starting to find his way in playing in that hole. Isco will play, don't get me wrong. This isn't going to be the start and live in every game. I'm just imagining what I think is going to start, but I think Isco's dip in form last season is going to allow for James to be the starting uh, number 10 and Isco will drop in when they, when they need it. And the, the thing that's crucial is that Cruz can maybe be injured, James can maybe be injured, but Modric, for me, has changed his game so much at Real Madrid. He works so much harder defensively than what he had done in Tottenham. Don't get me wrong, he's still putting the tackles, but he has to do this for Real Madrid because 
He, there's no one there who can do it. With Kadira, uh, a few seasons back, it allowed for Ozil to move forward, allowed for other players to just kind of do what they wanted in the final third. But for Real Madrid, this gap in here is where they concede a lot of their goals because not from shots in that area, but from the ball finding its way in there and then Ramos stepping up or Varane or Pepe stepping up and then they get their gaps in behind and the ball gets moved to wide areas and they're all chasing back. So for me, Modric has to be fit this season, has to have a good long run. You're expecting... A, an abundance of games from him this season because the injury worries, etc. just cannot happen this year if Real Madrid want to, to get back into the running for La Liga and Champions League. Gareth Bale, another player who needs to have a huge season. He looks sharp in pre-season. Everyone's kind of saying uh, from uh, around the Real Madrid camp that he's focused He's uh, despite all the claims that he was going to go to Manchester United, etc. He's ready to play for Real Madrid this season and ready to move forward. So it'll be exciting to see him. Benzema, Although injury worries, along with uh, every single season, Benzema's moving. Why would he move? He's still the starting striker for me. Yes, he's been moved, been, been playing more so in uh, preseason. If anything, for me, I wouldn't be swapping Benzema out with uh, another striker to come in. I would be thinking Ronaldo would push into that starting centre forward. James would move out left and Isco would fill in for the number 10. That's the only thing that I would imagine being done. But Benzema, for me, when he's fit, he's going to play. He's going to be the starting striker. And of course, the main man... Cristiano Ronaldo. Preseason, he still looks like he, he's adamant that this is going to be his best season, and that's what's great about Ronaldo. He's not happy with the heights that he had last season because he wants to continue. He wants to push forward, similar to Messi. I'm not trying to differentiate them here. He's still, they've got that same uh, red blooded drive to just get more goals. Ronaldo, more so and from his individual standpoint than Messi, I would say, but that's what drives him to be uh, the best player in this team because he's going to add the goals. I would like to see more goals from Benzema and James and Bale this season, but Ronaldo, of course, is going to look to be the top goal scorer. And for me, it's the same, similar start in formation, same team going forward. Benitez was known to tinker a bit with his time at Liverpool. I wouldn't be surprised if you see Isco coming in to start games and James left out or maybe Ronaldo moving in different formations. But I think that this, for me, is going to be the starting lineup for Real Madrid. And I, I, I deliberately did this to show that as much as there has been signings from Chekhov, etc., coming in, this team needs to stay this way because Real Madrid changed too much far too often. They need to stick with the, the, this team because they have got the talent there. They've got the stability. They, they, they know what, it's what it takes to win competitions. They know what it takes to win Champions Leagues. They know what it takes to play well with each other. They just need to get that recipe right and consistently play that team throughout the full season. So my prediction for them, I still think they've not got enough to win La Liga. I still think it's going to be, they're going to finish second behind Barcelona despite Barca's troublesome preseason. It's preseason. It's in the name. The Super Cup would have been nice for them to win the Spanish Super Cup. They got embarrassed by Bilbao. They'll take that. They'll take the punches on the chin. They'll move forward. I'll talk about Barca on their preview. Check out that. But I think the Real Madrid for me, going to be second. Champions League's a different story, though. It's a different game, different kettle of fish. I think that they might have a, uh, a stronger challenge at winning that than they will at the La Liga. They still have a good chance at winning it, of course. But for me, they'll be second place. There's my predictions. I'll let the comment section take light. I'll let the comment section explode. And people tell me that I'm too much of a Barca fanboy, but I'm still a Ronaldo fanboy. Don't know what that means. But other also, I am just a La Liga fanboy, and I'm excited for this league to get back up and running. Leave your comments in the section below. Follow me on Twitter at Francis underscore Maxwell. Instagram at Francis Maxwell TYT at TYT Sports on Twitter. Uh, and make sure to come back for more.